Hi, I'm Jeremy. Welcome back to another episode of Practical IT. In this episode, we are going to install a piece of software called PyHole on a fresh Ubuntu 16.04 LTS server. PyHole was originally conceived for the Raspberry Pi, but for demonstration purposes, I am just using it on a, an Ubuntu machine in VirtualBox. The purpose of PyHole is to act as a whole network ad blocker using DNS. This will work regardless of which operating system you're using, which could be Android, iOS, Mac OS, Linux, Windows, BSD, anything else you want to throw at it and you can set it up set your devices up one of two ways first would be to set your router when it hands out DHCP addresses to use the Pi hole as your DNS server the other would be to set it individually on specific devices for the purposes of this demonstration, we are going to go ahead and install PyHole. And then on a secondary virtual machine running Linux Mint, we are going to set up the DNS server to point at the PyHole machine. So let me get rid of the camera and we'll get started. We'll SSH into our virtual machine. All right. The installation for Pi Hall is done. Do as a uh, sudo. We'll paste in our command and hit enter. Password, and it should start. Whoops. Helps if I type in the right password. Okay, so it starts our little installation procedure. Network wide ad blocker, hit enter. It's free but powered by your donations. Hit enter. It needs a static IP address. This will be set during the installation. Okay. And your upstream DNS provider will do Google. And we'll block both IPv4 and IPv6. And yes, we want to make that a static IP. And just a warning that the router could still try to assign this IP to a device. Okay to that. Install web interface, yes. Logs, yes. And we'll finish up here. Installing a few packages. Okay, so it gives us the IP address slash admin. Let's bring over a Chrome window. Get 
to the login page and we'll copy our password. We'll log in. Apply the password. And so we've got our basic thing set up here. We've got our basic install set up here. So now we need to set about going over to our Linux Mint VM. And it's right here. And we'll come down to the bottom right corner to networking. We're going to turn it off temporarily. Go to network connections, wired, we'll edit. IPv4 settings. And we want to change our DNS servers or server to 172.16.74.216. We'll save that. And we'll come down here and turn our networking back on. And we can open up Firefox. And we can test with a few websites. Oops. Okay, so we'll bring up several websites, CNN, Microsoft, Apple, Linux.com, Oracle, Alphabet.com, which is a parent company of Google. Amazon and Barnes and Noble. So we'll bring back our Piehole admin page and we can see that 76 queries have been blocked in the last 24 hours. 660 queries total and rising. If we reload this, we will see the IP address of the host under top clients. This is our Linux Mint machine. go back to the dashboard and soon this should populate with a little graph reload here it might take a few minutes but of the websites we opened 14% uh, of queries have been blocked so you can whitelist specific sites. 
you can blacklist specific sites. You can disable Pi Hole for amounts of time or permanently. You've got options to update lists, query the lists, and look at different logs. Got some settings. You can flush logs. And Hoping my graph will come in for you guys. Maybe I'm not going to be that lucky. Now let's try this. Let's log out. Go back to log in. Paste in our password. And it's still not populated for you but I think you can get the general idea of what pie hole can do and the more traffic you've got on your network and the more computers devices that are sent through pie hole the more information you can gather and this is just one of the ways you can take more control over your own network and limit the attack surface for things that may come in through these ad sites. This can also be useful, you know, doing the, the whitelist and blacklist. Uh, if you've got children in the home, you can set this up and you may set it up to only be used on the machines that the kids are using. Or you can do this a number of ways. And hopefully you can have a little more control over what the kids might see on the internet. Let's take one last look over at There we go. Take a final look at some of our web pages. Uh, maybe we can see can't seem to get rid of that. Maybe we can see if there are places where we might have had ads before, but we don't at this point. Everything seems to be looking pretty decent. All right, we will go ahead and quit out of Firefox. On that note, this is Jeremy Like signing off for Practical IT. If you like this video, please subscribe, please like, please thumbs up. Hit the little bell if you're on YouTube to get notified when new videos are available. And if you've got comments or constructive criticism of these videos, please be sure to add that in the space below. And we'll see you in the next video. Have a great day.